Hello, my name is Patricia Polacco, that's P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A-P-O-L-A-C-C-O. And I'm an author and illustrator of children's picture books and have been for 27 years. Patricia, there's an interesting story behind your writing in our mother's house. Tell me about that story. Well, it was inspired, the, the book was inspired by a school visit I was doing in the state of Texas, as it happens. Um, I do almost 300 schools a year. That is to say, I'm an author who visits schools and tells stories and entertains children, but at the same time espouse my philosophies. At any way, some schools that I go to, they ask me to sit in on writing classes of the students. This particular school asked me to sit in on a fourth grade writing project where each child in the class had been asked to write an essay called My Family. Since most of my writing is personal narratives and about my family and people that I know and love. So I sat in on the class and several kids stood up and proudly read their essays. Then one little girl stood up and went to the front of the room, unfolded her paper and began to read. And the, it wasn't the teacher, it, I believe it was a mother visiting the class who was her assistant, immediately told the child, no, you sit down, you don't come from a real family. If you had seen the look of bewilderment, betrayal, and humiliation on this, this child's face, where she had been bullied pretty much by an adult, and she came back to her desk and she looked unbelievably sad and embarrassed and my heart broke for her and literally I, I felt a rage coming up inside of me and that when I went back to my hotel room that night I wrote this book called In Our Mother's House because this book is literally the story of this child's home and her family. Um, so that was the inspiration I mean, I, I do schools all over the country. I see uh, untraditional families, and not only this little girl, but children from other families that are untraditional have come up to me and, and said, you know, Mrs. Polacco, you always write about families. When are you going to write about us? So that was the inspiration, and that is why I wrote this book. How can books like yours help teach children about tolerance? It, now it's interesting, the word tolerance implies almost a superiority. I would say instead of tolerance, I think children should be taught to celebrate difference. I think if they are not equipped to get out in the world and realize the vast difference in human beings and their lifestyles and their religions and their skin colors and all of the above, they're almost doomed to be quite, you know, unable to understand the world around them. And my books tackle many subjects, but it's, my books are almost always about inclusion. Because I think until we learn to honor and respect what other people believe, I think we are doomed. I think we are heading for a very bad situation. What do you see as the benefits for children then, especially those who might be bullies or the victims of bullies, of acknowledging different types of families, and what is the lesson there? Well, obviously, bullying, in my opinion, uh, stems from a misunderstanding of someone who is different. Most bullies will, will single someone out because they don't understand them. And plus, they, they probably have been bullied themselves, or they wouldn't turn around and hurt other people. As a matter of fact, I, I've written a book that's going to be out this next fall called Bully, and that's exactly what it's about. It's about how kids gang up on each other, and they pick things out about each other that, are, that have nothing to do with relevant world around us. So, and I'm hoping from the stories that I do, many of my stories will characterize one kid who's a bit of a bully and they, they learn their lesson because they realize the beauty of life is understanding others and making the effort to understand somebody who's different. It's like, it's like uncovering a precious treasure chest buried in your yard when they find this wealth of, of, 
of beauty inside of another human being, I mean, I think that's, that's hopefully what they're going to glean and get from this. How do you feel when you hear your book has been challenged? Well, now the challenge that I heard about first, I believe, was a mother from Utah who had a problem with her kindergartner checking the book out of the library. Now, I've got to tell you, um, in our mother's house, I don't think it's for a kindergartner. I think the mother had every right to do that, not because of the content, but because of the level of difficulty of the words that are used in here. A five-year-old is not going to be able to plow through this book. So I think as parents, and I'm a parent myself, we all have the right to protect our children against something that we feel in some way is going to harm them. I think what I did take exception to was this mother then, who had the right to have this book kept from her child, decided to take it upon herself within that school and then the entire district to see that your child couldn't read the book either. That's where I think our First Amendment rights are getting trounced. Um, as, I, as I'll just repeat, if I felt something was harmful to my child, I have every right to prevent them from doing it. But I don't believe I have the right to go into a school where my children are attending or challenge a school district and force them to remove something that I think is harmful in some way. And what's interesting from some of the interviews that the newspapers have done with some of these parents in Utah and Texas both, none of them had read the book. Because this book, what it's about, isn't a lifestyle. It's told from the perspective of these three children when they're adults and their mothers have passed away. And it's a book that's a tribute to the love and the understanding and being honored by these women during their lifetimes. It's not espousing a particular type of lifestyle. It's simply, as all authors do, telling you a story and asking you to consider any household where children are honored and loved. I don't care what color the parents are. I don't care if it's a giraffe and a fish living together. If they're raising children who believe they are honored and loved, that's all that's important. But um, the, 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 the first, you know, the First Amendment is something that's very serious. The framers of our Constitution wrote that for a specific reason, and that is the freedom of our speech and the freedom to express ourselves. My worry is if this is challenged, not this book, but just generally, authors soon will be told what they can write about and what they can't. My family came from Russia and that's what happened there. And this happened in Nazi Germany. This is how it all began. So it's, it's very serious. Um, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you very much for your time. It is my pleasure. Thank you.